Welcome back as we continue talking with Terry Livgren and Dave Hope of the musical group Kansas. You know, you try to find something. You're looking for something. You're, you're trying to find, what is this thing all about? Uh, maybe if I do what he does or she does or they do, I'll find an answer. He went to drugs and, and 40 grand on cocaine, etc. What did you turn into? I mean, what were you looking for, Kerry? Uh, I turned to religion. I got very religious. I, uh, I guess I sensed all along that that emptiness that it, I felt, uh, somewhere in the back of my mind I knew that, that God was what I was looking for. But that's a, a whole other ball game. Where do you look for God? So I started looking into uh, what we'd say in today's culture are the popular ways to look for God. I got into Eastern religion, uh, various different beliefs and the philosophies, it's a long story, and I've just written a, a book about that. But uh, obviously the important point is that at the culmination of this long search was Jesus Christ. It's the last place I looked, and it's the last place anyone ever needs to look because there's nowhere to look after that. And uh, that, uh, Dave and I, in a way, we couldn't be more different, and yet we had the same problem. And uh, he just tried to cover it up, and I looked in the wrong place. Oh, but, but at the, you know... If someone had to come to you while you were doing, you know, dust in the wind or those kinds of things, if someone had come to you and said, Jesus Christ is the answer, I mean, he's who you're looking for, that's the answer. I mean, what probably would have been your, you're doing 40 grand worth of cocaine, you know, spaced out of your head, you know, you're into all of these, you know, <laughs> like, mm, what would you, have, how would you respond to well, some people did say that from time to time. As we traveled around, I'd meet people who, and uh, my conception of what a Christian was and what a Christian believed was, was so, I was just so deceived, and, and, and it was so twisted that I really had no idea what they were talking about. I didn't really know who Jesus was. I thought he was a great guru or another one of the masters, you know, no more significant than any other one. And I didn't really understand sin and my separation from God. And... Uh, when that finally became clear to me, my whole world came crashing down and the Lord built up a brand new one. And it was, uh, it was just, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, my life began in July of 1979. Yeah, I never, I never understood, like, Christianity to me, it was, it was always a very religious view. And uh, uh, I never understood, you know, I always thought it was like you're going to, you're supposed to turn into a Boy Scout. You know, you don't, you know, smoke, drink or chew or run around with folks that do, you know. <laughs> And I never uh, was ever, it never became in my mind that it was a personal relationship, that Jesus was, you know, you know, literally alive, you know, and that just is a whole different ballgame. And, you know, you know, you just, it's not religion. You don't act like anything. And in fact, all you do is just receive the gift of life from God and he lives his life out through you. And that's an awesome concept in itself, but it's a true one. I found that true in my own life. What is it when you say he lives his life out through you? I mean, immediately people get these visions of these guys going to the mountains and putting his long robes, or, you know, you walk through looking at the sky, something like that. What does that mean in practical terms? Well, and, well it means God meets you right where you are, is what it means. Uh, we are in what a lot of Christians would consider an unlikely spot, being in a big rock and roll band. But God met us right where we are. He put us where we are for a a reason and uh, when Christ came into our lives uh, like I say that's when life began for us it, it, we were so desperate such desperate searchers that uh, God had to meet us where we were and he does and he will yeah that's for sure he he didn't ask us to he didn't say Dave quit doing drugs Dave quit doing this Dave doing quit doing that all he just said was just let me in accept me receive my son and I said I receive you. I know in, uh, I see a need, and I had a need, and I want you. And he came in and just did his stuff, and things just started dropping off of me, you know? I mean, oh, I don't, you know, the, the desire for drugs went. Uh, I smoked four packs a day. That, that went. Uh, I don't have a, you know, want to drink anymore. Uh, you know, just, uh, you know, he didn't come in and just say, you have to do this, 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 this before you're, you know, worthy. He just took me for the mess I was, came right in, and... Uh, Praise God, I'm just being conformed to the image of his son. <laughs> Slowly, but you know, there. If you're sitting out there watching this thing, you know, and you're saying, well, hey, wait a minute, what are these guys talking about, man? You know, come off of it. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm looking to live. And what are they, you know, that's what you're talking about, isn't it? That's exactly right. Real life. The Bible says, he who has the son has life, and he who does not have the son does not have life. And those words are very haunting. I mean, it's like you're not even alive unless you have Jesus in your life. 
God doesn't look at men and consider them alive until the life of his son lives in them. And uh, I've got to tell everybody that's listening, you know, that's, that's true. That's exactly what happened to us. And we had the best that the world had to offer. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, because there, there, there are young guys out there right now watching this program, you know, who are tripping out or who are getting ready to go get loaded or who may be loaded right now, and they're thinking, man, you know, this really doesn't work. But how do I get to where you are? I mean, do I have to make, you know, a, a million seller or do I have to go to the utmost ends of my drug-related experiences? How do I get to where you are from where I am? Well, the simplest way in the Bible is just to call on God. And he says in his own word that he will not refuse anybody that really calls his name. With an honest, sincere, I want you in my life. You know, just to put right from the heart. You know, not something. That, this thing that's happened to us with Christ <clears throat> is not something that's uh, limited in any sense. I mean, anybody who wants this life can ask for it, and uh, it's a matter of uh, getting on your knees and believing in Jesus, and asking Him into your life, and letting your life begin. I don't think you could say it any clearer or simpler than that. It's a matter of asking Jesus to come into your life and let your life begin. And whoever you are and wherever you are, you can do that right now. You can just very simply say, Jesus Christ, I want to know the reality of you in my life now and mean it in your heart. As Dave said, he underlined it, he said, God said in his own words that he wouldn't turn away anybody who really seeks him out. And that's the bottom line. I mean, no half-stepping, you know, I mean, come 100%. And you search for me with your whole heart, you'll find me. So I just got to ask you one more question because somebody will ask me this. How do you reconcile being still members of a big rock group and being Christians? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think God put us here for a very important reason. If nothing else, it's a mission field. Um, oh, I'll say. <laughs> I don't think, uh, Ben, that there's really a need to reconcile if we were living what I would call a rock and roll lifestyle, that would be something to reconcile. But we play in a band. We don't live the lifestyle. And we use the gift that, that God has given us to his glory. And uh, it's as simple as that. If I were a carpenter, that doesn't mean the only thing I could build was churches. Uh, it means I would use my craft to God's glory wherever he put me. Well, man, we're sure glad you could come to be with us. Here's a book. This has been written by Carrie Livgreen. It's called Seeds of Change. It's just out. In fact, it's so new, he hadn't even seen a copy of it. He's seeing, as a matter of fact, I'd like to present you right here on the 700 Club with your own <laughs> individual you, copy of your book. Uh, I've been waiting to see this. Uh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and thank you very much for being on the program. Oh, yeah. Pat? Thank you very much, Ben, and I appreciate these folks. Listen, we've got a tremendous thing.